Alabama and Michigan are getting ready to face off in this year's Rose Bowl game. It's part of the college football playoff. Michigan is number one in the country. Alabama getting a lot of national respect, but Terry on Arnold, who could be a first round pick in the NFL draft next year, talking about JJ McCarthy, Michigan's quarterback. He could also go early in the NFL draft, comparing him to a Heisman trophy winning quarterback. We're going to talk about that and more. Welcome to the Bama tailgate YouTube channel. Let's get into it. Alabama and Michigan. We got football coming up on New Year's Day, and I can't wait for this game to get here, and I know you guys can't either, so why don't we get this thing started? What do you say, everybody? Welcome to the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Welcome to the party. I'm Mick Gillespie. Thanks for being here on the socials at Broadcaster Mick and appreciate all of you guys who have comment, who have commented, watched the shows and have been part of what we uh, do here on a daily basis covering the Crimson Tide. So um, I can get that part of this out. Thought it was really interesting on uh, the next round show, part of Disrupt the Media, something that uh, if you guys follow me, you know I'm a part of that. I do a show with Jay Coker on Disrupt, but the main show is uh, next round. They do a, a fantastic job, and they have Terry on Arnold on, uh, obviously Roll Tide Pods, which I'm on Elephant in the Room on that same channel, and then uh, on their uh, – you know, the regular channel doing their show every day. And they asked Terry on Arnold, who comes on as part of his NIL, about J.J. McCarthy, the quarterback of the Michigan Wolverines. And Terry on said, he reminds me of Joe Burrow. And some of you guys right off the bat are saying, no way, no way. Joe Burrow threw a lot more than McCarthy throws. Hey, look, Joe Burrow had different targets. Right. He does it. Uh, there's no Jamar Chase on Michigan's football team. But I'm going to tell you what Terry on Arnold was saying and why he has so much respect for J.J. McCarthy. Uh, it starts with athleticism. This guy is a really athletic quarterback and, and Alabama's going to have their work cut out for him uh, because he can do so many things athletically makes great decisions. That's something else that Joe Burrow did. Remember when Joe Burrow was at LSU? I mean, that last year there, he was tremendous, being able to decipher defenses, make plays, move around in the pocket. He could scramble. Um, and, and just the Alabama game alone, think about it, that duel between injured Tua and Joe Burrow, it just seemed like every time Alabama was ready to stop LSU, uh, somehow Joe Burrow would make a play, right? He can scramble. And J.J. McCarthy is really good at running the football. It doesn't show up. It's He's a different type of runner than Jalen Milrow, who's explosive. McCarthy is a lot like Burrow. He's very sneaky good at running the football. And I think that's something that Terry on Arnold meant when he said that. Able to make the reads and the throws. This guy makes a lot of the throws. He's really accurate with the football, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. But I think that talking about Burrow, his last year at LSU, and what McCarthy's done as Michigan's starting quarterback, nothing speaks to college football fans and Alabama fans more than the bottom line. Alabama gets it. You know, guys like Jay Bark, quarterback in uh, the 92 season, and his entire career at Alabama wasn't always flashy, but he got the job done. Winning his quarterback in the history of Alabama football. And you go back and look at those stats, and you remember athleticism, decision-making, ability to scramble, make the reads and the throws, a winner. That's what McCarthy is. That's what makes him so dangerous. I think of McCarthy as being a lot like Jay Barker, 25-1 and one as a starting quarterback at Michigan. Not going to get beat. He's not going to beat himself. You're going to have to come up with plays to beat Michigan. Uh, beginning of the season, he was really good. 
18 touchdowns, three interceptions, first nine games, and all three INTs came against Bowling Green. But then after that, only one touchdown pass in the last four games. And a lot of us feel like he was injured. They don't have to disclose that in college football. But there was obviously something going on there where he wasn't throwing the football a lot in, and having the success that he had in the air at the beginning of the season. What I think is that it really shows his ability to win football games if he was injured, which I think he was. When, when you see a guy go out there and play against Penn State on the road and then Ohio State, the two biggest games of the season, knowing that he's unable to throw the football or he's really limited in that capacity to still win, that tells you that Alabama has their work cut out when they're facing this guy. He just knows how to get the job done. And I I, I think about Jalen Milrow kind of flipping the coin. Remember all the reports that came out that Milrow had injured himself getting ready for uh, the game at Texas A&M? We didn't expect... Uh, Well, some people didn't expect him to play. Obviously, he did play, but he wasn't really able to scramble a lot. He had to stay in the pocket and throw the football. Hey, he got the job done doing that. He became a better QB because of that injury, and he won all of those football games. McCarthy, the same exact thing. So was it a shoulder injury? Was it an ankle injury? What? What? I don't know. And I don't think anybody besides the coaches at Michigan do know. Uh, they're not going to disclose that to us. But the bottom line is, this guy's a winner. And Terry on Arnold kind of identified him as a winner. That tells me that Alabama's taking McCarthy and taking Michigan seriously. And I think some Alabama fans are looking at this matchup and they're going, you know what, Alabama's going to smoke these guys. And I really feel like this could be a lot more of a defensive battle than a lot of you guys are thinking. I, I I just look at the way that Michigan's offensive line moves. We're going to talk about them. Now, I know they had a major loss on that offensive line, and that could factor into this game as well. But with the time off, we're going to see a different McCarthy than the guy that played against Ohio State, the guy that went to Penn State and couldn't throw the football. This guy, I think, is going to throw the ball. He may look a lot more like the guy through the first nine games with the 18 touchdowns and three interceptions than the guy that only threw one uh, touchdown in the last few games. But one of the other things that you really like, if you're Michigan and the NFL, about McCarthy is this 72-plus percent completion rate, right? 19 touchdowns, four interceptions. He also runs the ball. And in college football, you get negative yards for sacks as a quarterback. So you really can't look at his total rushing yards and get an idea of how good of a runner he is. But when you talk about a guy that, first off, can scramble, and second of all, they'll use the RPO uh, game in here. He's able to do the read option and look and pull back and run. Um, He's deceptively fast. Is he Jalen Milrow? And Terry on Arnold even pointed that out. No, it's a different type of runner. He's not the fastest guy on the football team. Uh, it, it, there's an argument that maybe a healthy Milrow is, but I'm not comparing the quarterbacks in this game. They're different styles. You know, McCarthy, deadly accurate, a lot of experience, just an incredible winning percentage, and um, knows how to command this offense. Really close with head coach Jim Harbaugh. He may be the one of the smartest quarterbacks that Michigan's ever had, and they had Tom Brady. I matter of fact, I was in school when Alabama played Tom Brady. I remember on the college radio station at Alabama previewing that football game, and I didn't think that Tom Brady would did take him that seriously. Shows you what I know about football, right? <laughs> <laughs> but back then, they, no one knew that he was going to be the best QB of all time. He was just a guy that that the quarterback got hurt, and he got his opportunity and kind of stepped in. Uh, so, so McCarthy, a legitimate quarterback and someone that Alabama is going to have to pay close attention to. Not only him handing the ball off and 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 reading defenses, but scrambling and also. Maybe expect this guy to throw the football a lot more than he did uh, down the stretch because he's healthy. Zach Zinter is a huge loss for these guys. Okay, first round grades. 
I think he would have been towards the top of the first round and not the back of the first round at guard. Yeah, broken leg in the game against Ohio State. This is a big loss because you just can't replace guys like this. Maybe somebody else slides in, but Zinter is a next-level guy. He has the potential to be uh, one of those stalwarts at the NFL uh, on an offensive line. So he's going to recover from this injury, but he's not going to play in this football game. That really hurts one of Michigan's biggest strengths, and that's their offensive line. He's the the best player on the offensive line. And this is an offensive line that you may see them throw extra guys up there and basically old school style say, hey, you know what? Here's eight guys on the line. We're going to run right at you and see if you can stop. And that was something that Alabama had trouble against Auburn doing. Now, we all know that Auburn, Jordan-Hare Stadium has superpowers. And Alabama figured out a way to win the football game. But if you are realistic about that game, there's some stuff there that happened in that contest that makes you uncomfortable. That's another reason why I feel like this could give Alabama some trouble. With that said, let's be honest here. Nick Saban hasn't lost to teams that are one-dimensional, and the one dimension is running. Just hasn't happened. The dimension that hurts him is a mobile quarterback that's able to throw the football, and then has these amazing games. Um, Now, earlier this season, uh, Bama lost to Texas. A lot of that, to me, had to do with, and for, you know, Michigan fans that are watching this video right now, this is an entirely different team. It was more about the coordinators not being prepared than the football team. Yeah. Kevin Steele, T-Rob, trying to get the plays into the defense in that game. They just didn't do it. Alabama's defense didn't know what they were supposed to do in the fourth quarter. You also had a Jalen Milrow that had very little experience, and Tommy Reese, the former Notre Dame uh, offensive coordinator that was only in his, what, third game, second game at Alabama, trying to figure out how to do things. All of that has changed. This this staff has come together, and, and it really has been impressive. One of the honestly, one of my favorite coaching staffs that I can remember uh, under Nick Saban. So, and there's been some good ones there, but it's been a lot of fun watching Tommy Reese come into his own and and the way that this offense has found that creativity that I always complained about with Bill O'Brien. They, they're creative, they're going to mix it up. Jalen Milrow has become one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the country. That wasn't the case uh, week two against Texas. So, that's all I'm saying is. It's, it's a different team right now in that capacity. But Alabama's, you know, they've had to have the miracle finish against Auburn to get here. They, they, they took care of uh, Georgia, but Georgia had a couple of their big targets that were banged up and, and Bowers and McConkey. So Bama's caught some breaks as well. Not having Zinter on the offensive line for Michigan could really hurt them. Another guy for Alabama fans that are trying to figure out exactly what to expect from Michigan to keep an eye on is uh, Chris Jenkins, who's on the def- uh, one of Michigan's best defenders. They're saying that he could be a, a, a late first-round pick. Michigan's going to get after the quarterback. They have a defense that puts a lot of pressure on, uh, on a QB. But the thing that Alabama's Jalen Milrow will be able to present that Michigan hasn't seen is I'm not just saying he's fast. I'm talking about there's a chance that Milrow's faster than anybody on Michigan's team. And that doesn't mean that you can't stop him. I mean, you've seen Lamar Jackson in the NFL. You can get him, but you really have to be disciplined to be able to contain guys like Milrow and guys like Lamar Jackson. Because if you make a mistake, they're going to blow right by you. They're going to run around you, by you. And sometimes Milrow, which Lamar Jackson can't do, can run through you. He's that big and strong. So that's how this matchup comes together. Uh, But I really did like Terry on Arnold saying that he reminded him of Joe Burrow because I totally get it. Burrow was so intelligent that senior season uh, at LSU. And he did run the football and he did the read options and the scrambles and just knew how to make the play when the play presented itself. So anyway, that's where we are right now. We've got some great guests lined up that are going to jump on the channel this week and and help us preview this game. We also have the tailgate show back uh, coming at you 
on uh, Sunday night. So that will be in time for uh, for the game on uh, on Monday. And uh, I'm super excited about this, man. This is this is what college football is all about. And I appreciate all the comments that we get from the Bama fans. And honestly, it's been great hearing from you Michigan fans as well. The, these fan bases feel very similar. Because you're talking about decades and decades of winning football, you know, and, and Michigan obviously being one of the prides of the northern part of the country and then Alabama down here in the south. Hey, I want to tell you guys this, that the uh, Gravedigger print is uh, being put together right now at New Life Art, Daniel Moore. That's uh, what's officially known as 4th and 31. Uh, but you can use the promo code Gravedigger25 and you get $25 off of that print. It's, of course, Isaiah Bond's dramatic catch on 4th and 31 to win the Iron Bowl. It's still honestly amazing to me that it even happened. I still can't even believe it. And if you use the promo code Bama Tailgate right now, you get 15% off your order. Now, that does exclude... Um, you know, the grave digger, the stuff that hasn't been finished yet. But uh, but still, it's a great deal. You got all that money from Christmas and you're ready to spend it on your favorite team, Alabama. And uh, that's one way to do it. Also want to talk about our friend Chad Anderson at Modern Lending. He's helped over 10,000 families in Tennessee, Alabama and Florida. Uh, get into uh, homes just like this one here. He was uh, my mortgage guy as well, but he also does investment consulting and he's an Airbnb expert. Find out for yourself at this chat is real uh, or chadanderson.info. That's modern lending with our friend Chad Anderson. Uh, and one last thing Pearl River Resort. This is the time of year where you need to swing over to Pearl River Resort. You, you, your, your family, you got them, you took care of them, you rolled out. Pearl River Resort over in Choctaw, Mississippi, in Philadelphia, hour and a half from Tuscaloosa, two hours from Birmingham, not far from uh, anywhere in the state of Alabama. They got the timeout sports lounge and sports book. That's where you can go in there, kick back, throw up some, uh, some wagers, watch all the games. They've got 20 TVs with the sports packages that include everything college football playoffs, uh, bowl games, NFL, NFL playoffs, NBA, college basketball, NHL, all that stuff, even European soccer. But they take bets uh, in there. They've got the uh, the kiosk if you kind of want to do it there. They've got the table. You can go up there and, and get some help there. Uh, they also have table games and uh, and slots. They've got Dancing Rabbit Golf Course, which yesterday would have been a fantastic day to get out get out and, and hit the balls at Dancing Rabbit. And the spa, if you just want to sit back, they got pools. They got it all. Pearl River Resort over in Choctaw, Mississippi. All right, guys, that's it for today. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks for hanging out and roll tide. 